Hi guys, Andre from Conveyor of Randomness here and today I'll be showing you a quick video of how I create film-like end credits using LumaFusion. So, let's get over to the iPad. First I'm going to need the end credits in a document that I can copy and paste into LumaFusion. I've done it here in a Word document. Then opening LumaFusion and creating a new project, which here I've called end credits. On the timeline I want to add a blank clip which I'm going to extend its length to about 20 seconds, but the length of the clip is up to you at this point, as it will not be the length time of the whole project. And I'm going to duplicate this blank clip to give me a longer project time, but this will be adjusted at the end. Next, I need to add a main title clip to the timeline and move it to the second track, so I can add the text from the end credit document to the project. Then extend the length of that main title clip to the same as the 20 second blank clip. Double click on the main title clip, then select titles and double click on the text so you can add the text from your end credits document and then switch over to the document itself. Select all of the text, then cut or copy it and then head straight back into LumaFusion and paste it into the text box. From here you can adjust the size, font, spacings of your text just to make it look a little bit more professional. Here I'm just going to reduce the size of the text. As you can see, we're facing a problem. We can't see all of the text on the end credits document as it will not all fit in the frame. Fortunately, there is a simple solution to this. Firstly, I have reduced the size of the text to the smallest value. Secondly, I want to make sure as much of the text on the top of the text is in the text selection frame. So I can adjust this portion of the frame first and then come back to the lower portion of the text that is currently missing from the frame. If we select the frame in fit mode, you can now see the text currently in the frame for this first clip to be adjusted to the keyframes. The keyframes are important as they allow us to mark the starting and end points to allow for a smooth transition of the clip from bottom to top. The reason why I chose the 20 second blank clip time was to allow for this smooth transition. As it is currently, the text size is far too small, so I'm going to increase the size of the frame to give me a more appropriate, legible, scrolling font size. Having made a few readjustments to the size of the frame, I need to position the main clip to where I want the start point to be at the beginning of the clip. I will mark this point as the first keyframe. By dragging the clip timeline marker to the end of the 20 second clip and now moving the main text clip to where I want the final position to be, I can add this as the second keyframe. Adding multiple keyframes can be useful, especially if you want clips that move in a lot more complex positions than this, by being a little bit more precise with movements and adding more keyframes to suit. By pressing play on this clip, you can see the smooth transition of the text from bottom to top as a result of the keyframes. If we head back into the main timeline, we can see what we've got so far. We now want to duplicate the main text clip, which will retain all of the keyframe information we've just created, so that we can now add the next section of text to it. Double click on the new duplicated main text clip, head back into the titles section and now move the whole frame up to show the text that was missing before. Ensure when you are moving the frame up to keep the X dimension at 50 as this will mean the frame is central and in line with the first section of text. Back into frame and fit mode you can see one of my paragraphs is out of shot. Into titles again, double click on the text to bring up the editor and make the adjustments to bring the text within the frame. You can now see that those adjustments have affected the first keyframe and the starting point of the clip. So I'm just going to lower the frame so that the text is below the horizon of the clip. And then play the clip to see how the second part now looks. Now that the text sections are done, we now need to align the two sections together. If we click and drag the second text section onto the third track above the first text section, but stagger it, we can then have a look at how they align to each other. If there is too much overlapping between the two sections, move the second section to the right so that it starts later in the clip timeline. If there is too much of a gap between the two, then move the clip to the left. Keep replaying the clip to monitor your adjustments until you are happy with it. Cut and trim any unnecessary timeline track length. Make any final adjustments that aren't going to affect the keyframes, and even if they do, just adjust those as well. Once you are happy with it and reviewed it a few times, you are ready to export. I usually export on Mac settings, 4K resolution and ultra video quality, but select the settings that suit you best. If you want to increase the speed of the new clip, I would suggest opening a new project, import your newly created end credits clip and change the speed of the clip that way. 
Then you're left with an end credits clip that looks like this. So there you go, my quick way of creating end credits using LumaFusion that could add that finishing touch to your content, allowing you to credit those who have helped you in the process. You'll find that you'll probably be able to apply the basic rules in this video and apply them to most video editing programs, as the important part is the keyframing. Although there may be other ways of creating the same effect, the way in this video is my self-taught method that I'm passing on to anyone looking for tips. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If there are any other quick tutorials using LumaFusion that you want me to show you, just let me know in the comments below. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this in the future, as well as other tech content that features on the channel. And press the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. That's all for me today. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Why don't you click on one of the two videos below, or both if you want, on any other LumaFusion related topics. Click before the time runs out. Three, two, one.